Rochester, step on her. We'll be late for the broadcast. Okay, boss. Don't turn here. We got to pick up Miss Livingston. Pick up Miss Livingston? Yes, and we got to pick up Mr. Harris and Mr. Wilson. This is our first program, and it's up to me to gather my little group together. What are you, mother hen? Never mind what I am. Be careful of those bumps. It's a wonder you wouldn't put a little air in the tires. There's plenty of air. There just ain't enough tires. <laughs> Now, don't be so funny. I've got a brand new one on the front. Sure sticks out, don't it? <laughs> Rochester, just drive. Take it easy. Here we are at Miss Livingston's house now. There she is, waiting for us. Oh, yeah. Doesn't she look cute? Hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. <laughs> Hello, Rochester. Hello, Miss Livingston. Gee, Mary, I called you only ten minutes ago. I'm surprised to see you all dressed up and waiting for us. I owe it all to zippers. Well, they are very handy. Well, hop in the car. We've got to get to the studio. Okay. Hold those springs down. I don't want to tear my new dress. All right. Get in. There you are. Ouch! They got me! <laughs> Isn't that awful? Rochester, how many times have I told you to fix these seat cushions? Either nine or ten. Oh. Well, I wish I knew what number was bingo with you. <laughs> now, get going. we still got to pick up Phil and Don. Okay, boy. See, the motor is a little cold, isn't it? Gee, Jack, I thought you told me you bought a new car this year. I said nothing of the kind, Mary. I said I was looking at new cars. That'll never start a boom. <laughs> Rochester, this is a two-way conversation, so keep out of it. Oh, Jack, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Still driving a 1920 Maxwell. Now, wait a minute. It's a late 1920. <laughs> anyway, in a couple of weeks, I may trade it in. What are you going to get, a spinning wheel? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Ha! Huh. <laughs> now turn here at this corner, Rochester. We gotta pick up Mr. Harris. I think we better stop and get some gas. Yeah, so we can make it. We only got five more blocks to go. I know, but we've been riding on bar time all week. <laughs> what are you talking about? Look at that gauge. The needle says pull. You glued it there. <laughs> I did not. Now, hurry up. we got to get Mr. Harris. Uh, where are we going to meet, Phil? Well, he told me to pick him up at Flo's Beauty Parlor. <laughs> He's probably getting the bags under his eyes pressed. Oh, Jack, you're always running him down. I am, eh? Yes, you're just jealous because Phil's handsome and you're you. <laughs> Look, Mary, if you think I'm homely, why don't you come right out and say so? It was perfectly clear to me. <laughs> Rochester, when I want anything decoded, I'll ask you. Until then, hush your mouth. Now, pull over. There's the beauty parlor. Rochester, run in and get Mr. Harris. We haven't much time. Never mind. Here he comes now. Oh, yes. Hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Mary. Hello, Phil. Well, how do I look? Oh, just like Ann Sheridan. Now, get in the car. <laughs> how do I look? Move over, Mary. So Boy, what an afternoon I had sitting under that hot dryer. Oh, I can imagine, Phil. Who does your hair, Phil? Sue or Evelyn? Oh, I always use Goldie. She can curl rings around the other girls. You know, Phil, if you'd wave your baton more and your hair less, I'd be a lot happier. <laughs> Have you any good orchestra numbers prepared for our first show? Kind of fine, though. I haven't seen my boys in a month. Why, Phil Harris, you mean to say you haven't even rehearsed for our opening program? We'll be on the air in five minutes. All right, so my band will sound spontaneous. Spontaneous? Yes, Mary, that's French for lousy. <laughs> you imagine that? A guy has all summer to get a couple of numbers ready and doesn't do a thing about it. Ah, oh, stop worrying. My arc still sound as good as it did last year. Yeah, Phil, for your information, there's an old Chinese proverb that says, orchestra better get better, or orchestra better get. <laughs> Catch on, kid. <laughs> I'd remember that, Phil. <laughs> Who are you tooting at, Rochester? There's Kenny Baker. Kenny Baker, where? There he is, sitting on his front porch. Oh, yes. Hello, Kenny. Oh, Kenny. He can't answer. He's on another program. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> Say, Rochester, you better step on her. We still have to pick up Don Wilson. Mr. Wilson, my, my. Now, what do you mind mind about? This car seats five, doesn't it? Yeah, but Mr. Wilson seats two. <laughs> now, there's plenty of room, Rochester. He can sit in front with you. You know, boss, there's an old Chinese proverb that says, 
When fat men sit down in small cars, small cars sit down also. <laughs> All right, Confucius, just drive. <laughs> hey, Jack, isn't that Don Wilson's house there on the corner? Yeah, there it is. Look, there's his mother in front selling jello. Oh, loyal, isn't she? Slow down, Rochester. Oh, Mrs. Wilson! Mrs. Wilson! What flavor, please? Strawberry, and where's Donald? Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Don's gone ahead to the studio. Oh, he has. Well, thank you, Mrs. Wilson. Goodbye. Goodbye. Jello, get your jello here. Look for the big red letters on the box. Isn't she a sweet little lady, huh? Hey, Jack, look what time it is. Oh, my goodness. Step on it, Rochester. We'll be late for the first broadcast. I told you we better get some gas. This miracle can't last. Well, it's downhill from now on, so hurry. Okay, boy. Not too fast. There's no top on this car. It was when we started. Oh, did we lose that again? Faster, Rochester, faster. Darn it, my hair's blowing all over the place. Well, stop complaining. So is mine. Yeah, but yours blows right off. Is that so? <laughs> Come on, step on it, Rochester. We'll be late. Hurry up. J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with Merry Old Land of Oz. Well, here we are again, folks, beginning our sixth year on the air for Jell-O. Sounds like a long time, but speaking for myself, I never knew that time could go so fast. Why, it's disappeared before my very eyes, the way a Jell-O dessert disappears when you serve it to the family. For Jell-O has been good news to families ever since your grandmother brought home her first package of it more than 40 years ago. And it's better news than ever today, for Jell-O has been constantly improved. It's quicker and easier to prepare nowadays. Dissolves instantly and sets quickly. It's far less expensive to buy, one of the most economical desserts you can have. And that wonderful Jell-O flavor has been made extra rich. Made so full-bodied and tempting that it rivals the real ripe fruit. So remember what I've been telling you for the past five years. Those big red letters spell Jell-O, and Jell-O spells the treat. played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as this is our inaugural program of the new Jell-O series, I would like to present our master of ceremonies. Who is he? Who is he? <laughs> to begin with, he's a star of stage, screen, and radio, plays a violin, and was born in Waukegan, Illinois. Oh, it must be me. He is humorous, witty, and spends money like a drunken sailor. Now that throws me off. <laughs> oh, well. So now, ladies and gentlemen, there you are. It's up to you. Who is he? For heaven's sake, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I am simply amazed at our audience. I've only been off the air 14 weeks. You'd think that somebody would have recognized me. Well, Jack, you can't exactly blame our guests here tonight. After all, they're strangers. My father isn't a stranger. Look at him sitting in the second row. He's still guessing. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, Don, it's sure good to be back on the air again, isn't it? Oh, it certainly is. You know, Jack, I'm much happier when I'm working than when I'm laying off. Me too, Don. My mattress is nearly empty. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been doing this summer, Don? Uh, did you have a nice vacation? Oh, well, Jack, I didn't do much of anything. I just got on my yacht and took a cruise up and down the coast. It was a lot of fun. You got on your yacht? Why, Don, do you, do you own a yacht? Oh, sure, I bought one last July. It's a tremendous thing. Well, that's quite a surprise. You mean to say you bought a yacht on uh, what I, on what I... Well, I was pretty lucky in the stock market this summer, Jack. <laughs> oh, you must have been, Don. You must have been. Well, that was nice, Don. I'm glad you had such a grand summer. And you know, I've never seen you looking better. You've lost weight, haven't you? Yes, boating in the salt air will do that for you. I've lost five pounds. Five pounds, <laughs> That's like Boyle... That's like Boyle Heights losing a herring. <laughs> Do 
Indeed, I'm glad we didn't kill that one, brother. <laughs> Wait Five a pounds, huh? <laughs> well, it's a start anyway. By the way, Jack, uh, what'd you do on your vacation? Well, I want to do something different this year, Don. So Rochester and I just piled into my car, took a tent along, and toured the whole country. You know, we sort of led the gypsy life. Oh, the gypsy life, huh? Yeah, Rochester read tea leaves, and I played the fiddle. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we did just dandy in Memphis. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, Don, I must tell you something. Uh, just a second. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? Is this your first program of the season? It certainly is. Are you enjoying it? Yes, but don't go by me. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I won't, lad. Don't worry. <laughs> Well, anyway, Don, say, what was I talking about? Jack, you were telling me all about your vacation. Oh, yes, and I must tell you what happened when I was... Uh, I'll tell you later, Don. Here comes Mary. Hello, Joe. What do you know? I'm back again on the Jello show. I hope I make you laugh with glee. You might as well. It's all for free. <laughs> well. <laughs> give her a hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was certainly nice to you, Mary. I didn't get a reception like that. Hello, Mary. It's sure good to see you again. Oh, hello, Don. Say, what happened to you? You look marvelous. Well, thanks. I've been taking pretty good care of myself this summer. Yes, Mary. Don lost five pounds on his yacht. His stomach looks thinner, too. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly does. So you've got quite a nice coat of tan, Mary. What'd you do all summer? Well, I stayed right here in Hollywood until we had that awful heat wave. Good thing you missed it, Jack. Oh, yes. They tell me it was pretty bad. Gee, it was so hot in Beverly Hills, the palm trees were fanning each other. <laughs> I can imagine. Why, Jack, it was simply unbearable. Why, it was 107 degrees in my shade. <laughs> you must have been in demand, Don. Huh? <laughs> Say, Mary, you didn't stay in town during that hot spell, did you? No, I went down to Laguna Beach and spent two weeks with my aunt and uncle. Oh, is your uncle in business down there? Yes, he's a shill for a lemonade stand. <laughs> well, that's quite a novel occupation. So you were down at the beach, huh? Yeah, and oh, Jack, I must tell you, what? I met the cutest lifeguard down there. What a doll. A lifeguard? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only oh, has a marvelous physique, especially at high tide. High tide, what difference does that make? Plenty, he's got bow legs. <laughs> Well, none of us is perfect, you know. So your new romance has bow legs, huh? What's his name? Francis is Jones. <laughs> Descriptive, isn't it, huh? I'd like to meet him. Bring him over sometime. Say, Don, I think it's about time that Mr. Harris got here. Where's Phil? Here I am, Jackson. Oh. Hi, everybody. This is smiling Phil Harris back on the good old Jell-O program. Yeah, back at the NBC studio, which is just about a mile and a half from the Wiltshire Bowl. No cover charge at any time. Yeah. Ah, uh, don't humor him, folks. He's conceited enough. Well, Phil, that's quite, <laughs> that's quite an entrance you gave yourself. Music and everything. Well, I had nothing to do with that, Jack. The boys planned it themselves. It was spontaneous. Is that from the French? Definitely. <laughs> well, Phil, at that, I don't blame you. I don't blame you for giving yourself a build-up on our first show. And now that you're here, uh, how about a number? Look, I'm an actor. I ain't playing until I get a little dialogue. Oh, a little dialogue, eh? All right, then. Uh, tell me, Phil, what did you do this summer? Did you have a nice vacation? I certainly did. Well, and now, ladies and gentlemen, Phil Harris... Hey, wait a minute! <laughs> What's the matter? Well, I told you I'm not playing a number until I get a couple of laughs here. Phil, the easiest way for you to get laughed is to play a number. <laughs> now, go ahead. Okay, Jackson. Oh, by the way, Jack, I meant to ask you, aren't we going to have a singer on the show this season? Oh, of course, Don. I'm, tr I'm trying out a young tenor. He's a kind of a cute kid, too. He should be here soon. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Jack. What? Tell him about the other singer you wanted to get. What other singer? You know, the one you thought you could put over on the sponsor. Look, at, I didn't try to put anything over. <laughs> Come on, what was it, Mary? Well, oh. after Kenny Baker left, Jack thought he'd save a little money this year. I did not. What happened, Mary? He tried to get his canary on the program. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just figured it would be a novelty for a couple of weeks. Besides, Dicky Boy can whistle Sunrise Serenade with the best of them. <laughs> Believe me. What's the name of this young fellow you're trying out? Uh, his name is Day, Dennis Day. His mother's here with him. Is she my type? Yes, Phil. She wears a skirt. <laughs> uh, 
Anyway, you'll meet Dennis soon. Now, go ahead, Phil. Uh, uh, let's hear a good hot tune. Huh? Now, hold it a minute. Answer the phone, Mary. Okay. Hello? Who? Yes. It's for you, Jack. It's Mrs. Day. Oh, Dennis's mother. Give me that phone. Oh, boy, what I've gone through with her already. Uh, hello, Mrs. Day. How are you? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, we're expecting you right away. Well, look, Mrs. Day, can't Dennis take his bath later? <laughs> we're on the air now. We need him here. Fine, he's been in town three weeks. He has to take a bath today. That'll never hurt the program. Why? <laughs> Now, look, Mrs. Day, I'm not trying to run your affairs, but you see, this is our first program of the season, and Dennis should be here on time. You know, this isn't a clam bake. We're established. <laughs> now, please, hop in a car and rush Dennis over here immediately. What? Should he wear a blue suit or a gray suit? Tell her never mind. We'll put the lights out. Mary. <laughs> he can wear anything, Mrs. Day. Now, hurry, won't you? Goodbye. Oh, boy, what a lilac she is. Play, Phil, and that canary wasn't such a bad idea after all. Go Fly a Kite from the Star Maker, played by Phil Harris and his Spontaneous Orchestra. Say, Phil, that number sounded a lot better than I expected. Wasn't it good, Mary? Yeah, that was well, Phil. Oh, it was all right, but personally, I thought the boys played a little too pianissimo. Too what? Pianissimo, too loud. <laughs> Phil, even though you carry a union card, uh, for your information, pianissimo means soft. Fortissimo is loud. Is that so? Would you like to make a little bet on that? Would I like to? I'd love to. Then you must be right. <laughs> Darn right I'm right. You know, I didn't study music 15 years for nothing. No kidding, Jack. Did you study violin for 15 years? I certainly did. I practiced on that fiddle 15 long years. Spontaneous fits here, too. <laughs> Listen, Mary, you can joke. You can joke about it now. But when I was a young fella, I was torn between two loves. In fact, it was a toss-up whether I'd become a concert violinist or a comedian. I didn't know which path to take. Don't tell the finish. I'm reading the book. <laughs> That's very amusing, Mary. However, if you'd like to know the truth, <laughs> the first time I ever... Hey, that must be Dennis Day and his mother. Now, listen, fellas, before they come in, I want to tell you something. While they're here, I want you to show me a little courtesy and respect. I'd like to get this kid started out on the right foot. Now, remember that. Okay, Mr. Benny... More like it. Uh, there's somebody at the door, kind sir. Oh, all right, don't overdo it. <laughs> Come in. Well, how do you do, Mrs. Day? Come right in. Thank you. Come along, Dennis. Yes, yes, come in. Well, I'm glad you found the studio all right, Mrs. Day. Uh, did you take a cab like I told you to? Yes, it was $1.65. Here's the slip. Oh. <laughs> you sure walked into that one. Oh, well... I don't mind. Then smile. 
Mary, I'll mind my face and you mind your business. Oh, Mrs. Day, I want you to meet the members of my cast. This is Barry Livingston, Don Wilson, and Phil Harris. How do you do? How are you, How do you How do, Mrs. Day? Day? And uh, this is her little boy, Dennis. Say hello to the people, Dennis. Hello to the people. Oh, fine. <laughs> Well, naturally, Mary, he's a little nervous. Aren't you, Dennis? Am I, Mother? Certainly not. Oh. Now, Dennis, I want you to feel right at home here. We're all your friends, and we want to help you in every possible way. I'm indeed grateful, Mr. Benny. Well, that's sweet. And uh, now, Mrs. Day. Yes? Hmm. <laughs> How can a basso profundo like that have a tenor for a son? <laughs> Now, uh, Mrs. Day, I realize this being Dennis's first time here that you're not aware of our schedule. We have a very definite starting time. You have? Yes. We uh, do our first broadcast at exactly 4 o'clock Pacific time and our repeat broadcast at precisely 8.30. Now, is that clear? Perfectly. And when is payday? <laughs> payday? When it's springtime in the Rockies. <laughs> Miss Livingston, please. Oh, he'll get paid, Mrs. Day. Don't worry about that. Now, Dennis, I think that about covers everything. That's all there is, and that's all you have to know. You're here to sing, so just be on time and do your best. Now, are there any questions? Yes. When do I get some funny lines? <laughs> funny lines? I know how you feel, bub. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, you complain once more, and you'll be known as the silent maestro. <laughs> Now, Dennis, uh, what song have you selected for your debut on our Jell-O program? I'm going He's to going to sing a delightful new number called Good Night, My Beautiful. It's becoming very popular. Yes, I know. It's a grand number. Now, before you sing, Dennis, I thought our audience would, you know, like to know something about you. Like to know your age. How old are you? Fifty-nine, including mother. <laughs> Well, <laughs> that's not what I meant, Dennis. I mean, how old are you by yourself? Dennis is just 19. 19, well, uh, 19 from 59. That makes you 40, doesn't it, Mrs. Day? I'll take that. <laughs> take it. You snapped at him. <laughs> now, just one more question, Dennis. Uh, where is your home? I mean, that is, where were you born? Uh, Dennis was born in Cairo, Illinois. Oh, Cairo, eh? My gosh, an Egyptian. <laughs> Phil, the boy was born in Cairo, Illinois, not Egypt. Well, a comedian like me overlooks them details. <laughs> I'd like to catch you overlooking the Grand Canyon someday <laughs> with at least eight of your boys. <laughs> now, go ahead, Dennis. We're all waiting and anxious to hear your song. Now, uh, Dennis, this is the microphone. How do you do? Oh, my... <laughs> You are nervous, aren't you? Now go right ahead. You have nothing to worry about. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for his first song on the Jello program, Dennis Day will sing "Good Night, My Beautiful" from George White Scandal. Take it, my boy. Now, Dennis, breathe deeply. Yes, mother. Don't forget the words. No, mother. And come here. Let me fix your tie. Oh, don't bother, Mrs. Day. You know this isn't television. You're quite fortunate, Mr. Benny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good, Mrs. Day. Very good. Sing, Dennis. Oh boy, I'd love to give her a hot foot. <laughs> No, 
body full is so wonderful each moment with you is like living a dream come true so hold me close to you parting is such sweet sorrow your love is all i have to wake and hold The night will be lonely but beautiful When I am alone with my wonderful dreams of you My wonderful dreams kidding. Dennis, that was very, very good. I'm sure everyone enjoyed it. Thanks, Mr. Benny. You've made me the happiest girl in the world. <laughs> oh, he's so nervous, folks. Play, Bill. If you want to enjoy real, delicious, old-fashioned goodness in a new-fashioned dessert, a dessert that's quick and easy and inexpensive, here's the answer. Jell-O chocolate pudding, the answer to your family when they ask you for something new for dessert. Jell-O chocolate pudding is the best-tasting dessert you ever dipped a spoon in. Rich and creamy and satin smooth, with that old-fashioned chocolate flavor, a rich, full chocolate flavor that's tempting and luscious. And best of all, Jell-O chocolate pudding is just one of three new Jell-O puddings. There's Jell-O butterscotch pudding, mellow tasting and smooth. It has a delicious taffy color and a real true butterscotch flavor, as appetizing as old-fashioned butterscotch candy. And there's Jell-O vanilla pudding, delicate and inviting, always a family favorite. All three Jell-O puddings are quick and easy to make. The simple directions are in every package and the easiest and most economical way to buy is three packages at a time. So ask your grocer tomorrow for Jell-O chocolate, butterscotch, and vanilla pudding. This is the last number of the first program in the new Jell-O series, and we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Well, Mary, our first program is over. Aren't you happy? Yeah, just think. Only 38 more weeks and we can take our vacation. That's right. Gee, I don't know where to go, do you? Oh, we'll think of some place. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, folks. See you next week. <laughs> There'll be another Jell-O product on the air starting next Tuesday night, October 10th. Jell-O pudding. Jell-O pudding will bring you the Aldrich family. And if you've enjoyed the adventures of Henry Aldrich all summer, we think you'll be mighty glad to know that he'll be with you this winter, too. Consult your local newspaper for time and station next Tuesday, October 10th. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>